Hi folks, thanks for joining me again. This week's river pattern is the Bionic Foam Ant. So without further ado, let's get into it. So, in the vise we have a Hanak H130 barbless hook. This is a light wire hook and it's in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Sempify. It's the 12 o and as you can see, it's black. First thing I'm going to do is get a little bit of wax onto my thread and run a bed of thread up the shank of the hook. Once I've got my bed, I'm going to bring my thread in open turns all the way back to about a millimetre or so back from the eye, then remove my waist. Now next, as you've seen, uh, I'm using this as the body. Now, how do I get this? So basically, what I've got is some bionic foam. This is available from Uphaven Fly Fishing. And what I've got to do is cut it out. And I'm going to use one of the Gunville cutters here. This is the 3.5 millimetre for this size. And it's fairly straightforward. I'll try and get it onto the camera. Put the drill bit up to the foam. Then you simply, with the slot, pop it out. And you have your foam cylinder ready to go. Now, obviously, the foam, the white part here, is just a little big for my needs. So I'm just going to trim that down and leave approximately an eighth of an inch of the white. Now, I want to catch that back with about a quarter of an inch of the black. So I've done two wraps. I'm going to lift it up get a couple of wraps round the eye and then I'm going to come back and start very loosely trapping the foam down onto the shank of the hook. Now because I put a good bed of thread down it just makes my life a little bit easier when I'm laying the foam cylinder on. It just sits no problem. Then at the end here I'm going to come, take about half an inch at the back and then I can concentrate a little bit more on just getting that foam bedded down. Now we're going to go up and down here quite a bit so I'm not overly worried about uh, the foam sticking out there at the moment. Next thing then, I'm going to tie in the wing. I'm using some of this ultra dry yarn from Fish On. This is the light orange. Now it comes, it's quite thick. I think if you follow my videos, I've used this quite a bit. It's quite thick. I don't want all that. So I'm going to use my brush here just to comb out some of the fibres. And I want maybe half. So I'll just bring that to the side and snip few bits of the fibres that I do want. Then I can capture that in on the body. Doesn't need to be particularly neat at this point. Just make sure you've got it on. And then trim to your needs. So I'm going to take about and I'm just not I'm not cutting it in one straight cut. I'm just going up and down because I want a raggedy effect here with the yarn, like so. And that's looking tip top. So next then, I want to really concentrate on just tidying all this up. Now the original pattern that was shown to me by Ben Worley, um, he didn't bother with the legs. I'm going to use legs 
And what I'm using is from Vineyard. This is the Centipede Legs Mini Speckled. And I've already taken a little piece off here. And what I'm going to do is fold the piece I've got in half. I don't want big huge legs, but I want them enough to be on the fly. Just make sure they're nice and even and capture them in at the front. If you do a couple of tons of thread, then you can actually play about with them a little bit until you get them how you want them. Then bring your thread back up Make sure that these are split down the sides and then just lock that into place with a couple of turns. Now you can leave this to the end, I'm just going to do it now. I'm just going to snip so the legs are nice and even. And that one's not sitting quite how I'd like it at the front here, but I can sort that out later on. So next then, I'm going to bring in some hackling material. And what I'm using is, it's just a ginger cape. You could use black, I dare say black would work just as well. And I should have done this before I came on camera actually. So I've selected a feather from the cape. And what I'm going to do is just strip it back to about there. So I get the size of hackling I want. Then I'm going to just leave myself a tag end just to tie in. And before I do that, I'm just going to get a little bit of wax onto the thread. So now I can try not to trap your legs in like I nearly did there. And it is desperate to tuck under. I'm just going to pull that to the side. And the legs are all over the place. Anyway, do your best not to catch the legs in like I'm trying to do here. <laughs> He's been a wee scallywag. There we go. Sitting a bit better now. So once you've trapped in your feather, now if you want to be pedantic about the whole thing, you can strip out one side of the feather and it will give you a much neater fly. I'm not overly worried about that. I just want buoyancy because at the end of the day, I'm going to take this to the river and probably stick it in a tree. So, uh, I'm not going to be overly worried about um, the hackle not looking quite right, just as long as the profile is good. And I'm just still trying to combat these legs. They are being troublesome. But So you want touch and turns with your hackle. Got a nice long feather here so it shouldn't be too difficult. I mean, you don't need a, an expensive cape to do this. Any any sort of brown cape will work. Tell you what, I'll be needing a dram after trying to avoid these legs. Jeez, oh. Anyway, I'm just about getting there. So I'm bringing that over now. And it's starting to look not too bad. So as I get near the end, that leg's pinged up again. Desperate to be caught in it is today. Uh, it's funny, you know, I do this, I've tied about 30 of these now. Um, apparently they're very good on the Avon and the chalk streams. Uh, I don't know why. They don't look like any ant I've ever seen. But they're doing a job, so it's worth having in your box. Right, I've caught that now and I'm now working my thread to trap my hackle into place. That's looking pretty good. And I've still managed to not catch the legs. So now I've trapped my tail end, I'm going to pull everything back and bring my thread to the front of the hook. Now before I whip finish, I'm just going to add the slightest bit of glue 
to my thread. And this will save me coming in later on. Quick finish tools. Not playing today. I miss the days when I used to just hand finish. It was so much easier. Okay, so because I put the glue in, I won't have to come in and try and move the post and to finish the fly. So next then, uh, I seem to have lost my leg. It's the leg on my side. You're probably thinking, what's he on about? That leg sat nicely. And, and that leg has sat nicely. It's this one here. It keeps on torturing me. But I'm nearly at the end game. So I've removed the spare bit of hackle. Not quite finished yet. So what I want to do next is invert my vise, or I can, I'll tell you what, to save the camera going out of focus, I'll just invert the fly in the vise. Might be a bit easier. So what I want to do next is remove the hackling from the bottom of the fly. Now, you've got to be very careful not to catch these legs. They're very delicate, and if you've spent a lot of time, like I just have, trying to avoid them, it would be an utter disaster if you uh, ended up cutting them off after all that effort. But I'm just going to turn the vice to the side and hopefully you'll be able to see the profile from underneath. And there we go. So I'll just turn the fly the right way up and that's how I'm tying the bionic ant and apparently it's taken some very very good fish off the Avon. I hope you got something out of that, it's worth a go, it's a bit unusual. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all next time.